very big for the those out of towners. We're hitting Tim Hortons, you know, weekly. Like, that's not a thing everywhere. No. I'll tell you what. What we've had comments about Tim Hortons though. Well, we have. And if you're one of those individuals that hates when I eat, I'm sorry, I'm fat. Tim Hortons donuts are terrible. What? Compared to like, you yeah, okay? Right, there's stop, lots of stop, donuts around. Stop it! Stop it right now. They are. Stop it. What are you talking about? Stop it. You know why I'm telling you to stop it? No. Because nothing compares to Paul. That is true. Budway's is really good too. Budway's has bang and donuts. I know. Well, when you try, if that's the bar you have set. Yeah, it is. It is. It's never going to compare. <clears throat> It'll never compare them. Tim Hortons donuts are just not. In and of themselves, they're fine. You mean like comparatively to like Dunkin' Donuts and and the no fast food coffee world. Tim Hortons Donuts is the Jason Croom of donuts. It's serviceable, but you're still gonna go look for a better one. You don't think Jason? You don't think Jason Croom is good enough to uh, have secured himself a, a starting know. roster spot on this team? I don't know. I think Logan Thomas some, secured himself a defensive end position. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? I don't know. Yeah. Donuts. We were talking about donuts. We're dropping another episode here somewhere. I'll find it. If you wouldn't mind hitting that Le'Veon bell, appreciate it. <laughs> Don't do that, it won't show up. <laughs> Should I insert the Sarah McLaughlin music right now? I will remember you. Great. No, now I'm gonna think of a homeless cat. Yeah, exactly. Every time I hear Sarah McLaughlin, all I think is her trying to ruin my weekend with all these, you know, abused animals that come on television. Every time I hear Sarah McLaughlin, I'm like I can't look at the TV. Can't do it. Speaking of unappealing, let's talk about this Bills defense without Kyle Williams. Mm. How about that? And the era is over. He survived like seven coaches. 13 years, man. Yeah. 13 years. How many coaches did he survive? Who drafted him? 06. Jesus. He was a rookie going up against Wood and Levitri. Williams survived more general managing changes in the NFL on one organization than most players survive head coaches. He went through three different GMs. <clears throat> Nick's Whaley and Bean. Wait, wait, wait. We also had Brandon in there. Four. Remember when Brandon was in charge? For like a cup of coffee. Malarkey resigned in 2005, so Jer Jerron in 2006. Changaley. Changaley in 2010, well, 2009, 2010. Doug Marone. Marone. Ryan. Yep. Um, Perry Fuel. Anthony Lynn. <laughs> Anthony Lynn. Yeah. He played for Fuel, though, didn't he? He did. Yeah, he would have played for Perry Fuel. Because Jerron was, because that was Jerron, right? That took over, they replaced Jerron. I want to say, yeah. So, I guess the question becomes, you're losing the leader of your defense, right? The emotional leader of your defense. What? Of your team. Yeah. He's unquestioned. Yeah. I mean, usually you say like the longest tenured player of a team doesn't, I mean, okay, you could say he's the longest tenure guy, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's the leader. He right. was the unquest for a couple, of, like a lot of years now. Yeah. They looked at him when he hit when he hit nine years. I think they just started. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you are the leader of this team. So how do you replace that? You don't. You can't. So, so I mean, you think the, the school of thought is Lorenzo Alexander becomes that much more important? 
Um, right? No, nah, he, he is because you have those two pillars to talk to as far as veteran leadership. Kyle within the organization, Zoe within the NFL. Mm -hmm. Coming together. Now, you got to think, does that defer to Latulale because of the familiarity with McDermott? Being a leader to younger guys coming in and saying, hey, this is the system, this I is mean, how we do it. I, honestly, when you're when you're signing Latulale, is that even a conversation? Like, do you still offer him that contract if he's got to be the leader of the defense next year? Like, well, he, you're I paying mean, him like he's the leader of the defense. Exactly, exactly. Because of either because of financial reasons, I mean, is he the leader? I don't know if Latulale gets a lot of credit for what he does because it just doesn't show up on a stat sheet. No. Neither's, neither, I mean, they talked about it with Williams today. He's had like 600 career tackles yeah. in 13 years. Isn't that crazy? That's a lot, too. Yeah. From a defensive lineman. That's a lot. So there has to be leaders that emerge not only on the defensive side of the ball, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but who's your team leader going to be? Well, is it, is it your quarterback who's going to be in his second season? How many guys will follow him? I mean, I know guys will follow him <clears throat> naturally because he's the quarterback. But will guys necessarily follow what he's saying? Is he a guy that can come in at halftime of a game where they're not performing well and give a halftime thing and people will listen? I'm wondering. Well, let's review who the Buffalo Bills uh, captains were. Are you ready? Sure. Patrick DeMarco, Kyle Williams, Lorenzo Alexander, Stephen Hauschka, Taiwan Jones. Uh, LaShawn McCoy. Wow. Really? Mm -hmm. There you go. Half of those guys aren't going to be there. Yeah, I mean, you look at Patrick DeMarco, you don't you don't know if DeMarco is going to be there, right? Conceivably. He's got to be. He's got to be a special teams contributor. Gotta conceivably, be. you could have none of those guys as your captains next year. Yeah. You, well, I mean, Kaushka is like the only one that you're like, but he didn't kick all that well this year. So I he mean, missed a 42-yarder. It was short. Well, he's he hurt. hurt. He was hurt. He's hurt. He was hurt. Which is what I didn't get. Why don't, why don't you just call? You got third and 19, man. You're in four-down territory. Just go call two plays to get 19 yards. Oh, yeah, because that's so easy to do, Mario. What revision is Better than calling one play for 19 yards. Revision is history. Well, you always say that to me. I still don't know what it means. If you know you have a hurt kicker, why are you even trying to be like, oh, no, I guess we're just we're, we're going to settle with a field goal here. I mean, I think you go to him and say, hey, can you do it? And he's going to tell you, yeah. I mean, that's... You didn't see him kick throughout the week at all? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you look, Patrick DeMarco could be gone. Kai Williams is certainly gone. Lorenzo Alexander is not He's a free agent, yeah. yeah. Hauschka is still here. Taiwan Jones, I mean, he's on IR. He's probably the most likely guy to be back out yeah. of that group. Well, and McCoy. But again, there's a lot of question marks around McCoy. So Why was it, DeMarco in so many times today? I mean, I don't know. I just don't think that oh, uh, your offense. DeMarco played a lot. Just think of your offensive guys on that list. Yeah. DeMarco and McCoy. McCoy. That's were, you, it. were your offensive leaders? Really? Mm. That's it. Mm. No. And your defensive captains are Lorenzo and Kyle Williams. So I guess that brings to I guess that brings to light a question: Do you wipe the slate clean and let Alexander go and say, you know, thank you, but you know, it's, who will emerge? Yeah, give the defense a chance because you already have the system in place, right? You've already got the scheme. You already know what you want to do. So do you mm -hmm. let it go and just let Edmonds be your captain? One more year. You hold on to Zofo. One more, one more year. year. Because you do have new new pieces in place that were helped by Kyle and Zoe this year. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think one more year. And the fact that he plays multiple places. Mm -hmm. And if the, kid, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the guy can still do it, you, you pay him to do it. He's, he's, he's not. He's 36. He's going to be 37. He's not very fast laterally. No, no, he's so not. He's getting exposed on the inside. So what you, you do know? is you put him in very limited roles. But his presence on the team... If you if you're planning on using all ten picks and you think all those ten picks will apply. Mm -hmm. And whoever you acquire. Cause you know what? You have to bring a lot of bodies into camp this year. Yeah. 
So if you sign Zoe, he can get everyone acclimated to what's going on, and then after the year, he's gone. Because then you have, he'll have Milano for three years. He would have had, he would have been t tutoring Milano. We could conceivably on that defense, tutoring Milano for three years. Yeah. Edmonds for two. Yeah. White for three. Hyde and Poyer for three. Whoever they cut, if if Wallace plays next year at corner, two, mm -hmm. two years with him. So all those guys have that experience. You got to start looking at, you know, Hyde or Poyer to take over, you know, one the back of those. end of that defense. One of them needs to take over if you're going to be looking to move on from Alexander at I, any point. I would make Milano and Hyde and Poyer captains next year. Hyde and Poyer. Hyde and Poyer. Yep. I don't know about that. Why? I mean, wouldn't you want to? I mean, wouldn't you want somebody on the line to hold those guys accountable? I mean, ideally, like the Bills right now, they had two guys on special. They had three special teams players as captains. And look at their special. And teams. their special teams is awful. <laughs> yeah, their special teams is terrible. Uh, no, I know. I just say that because um, well, you're gonna have Lorenzo. So you th you think one from each level should be a captain? I mean, if you're looking at having to reappropriate the culture of the team. I mean, li listen, if Lorenzo Alexander's back, you're going to have two defensive captains. Zo and insert name of other player. doesn't. I mean, that's the deal. If you lose Alexander, you're naming three defensive captains. Because you yeah. need to hold everybody accountable at each level of the game. That's it. You know? And McCoy, apparently, during during the, uh, the season, went up to Foster and was like, dude, you don't take this seriously. McCoy said that about somebody. Like, you're not working as hard as you need to work. You're not taking this seriously enough. And Foster said that, you know, that made me work hard. Who's your three? Defensively, Hyde, Milano. Oh, Jesus, not Jerry Hughes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> star. I got white right, Milano. Right up, star. right up the middle. Right, right up the gut. Right up the gut. Oh, wait, Milano's playing in the middle next year? I mean, just in the linebacker group. Hey, don't, no, no, no. Don't hold me to that. Don't hold me to that. Did you see they went a lot of three down linemen today? Yeah. Went a lot of three down linemen. Mm -hmm. Was that to cover up the holes in linebacker? Mm -hmm. Three down linemen? Yeah. Cover up the holes in linebacker? Yeah. No. <clears throat> you had three down linemen. You had uh, Edmonds and Zoe. How many guys is that? They weren't worrying about the run. Yeah. You put six in coverage. Yeah. Especially when White went out. Well, that's what I'm saying. They played more zone. Yeah. So you played six in zone behind you. It wasn't to free up any linebackers. I'm just saying, didn't wouldn't that mitigate risk of having inexperienced linebackers in the game? No, because you only had two of them in there. You had six defensive backs. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling at you. Seriously. You scream into my ear. Don't even try to do it. Roll back the film. You're of the school of thought that Zoe's back because they need the leadership. Makes sense. But that doesn't For fill that year. doesn't fill the hole of Kyle Williams in the middle of that defense. No. I think Harrison Phillips played fine. Just fine. He's not as instinctual as Kyle Williams is, but you, how can you expect somebody to be? Kyle Williams has been a pro bowler in the middle of that defense forever. Yeah. You know, he's a 13-year veteran. So you can't expect Harrison Phillips to come in and just be that guy. They'll, they'll get another depth signing. I mean, they picked up, I mean, what they picked up Jordan for, Phillips this year yeah. for that reason. I mean, what better way for pressure to be off of Harrison Phillips than have Star next to him? Yeah. Right? That's what they're going to do. We talked about it during the summer, the cycle. So you think that made Star more of a necessity because you knew you were losing Kyle at some point? You think that made Star that's, more of a necessity? That's why you were... That's what I think Star's agent knew before he signed. <laughs> yeah. $50 yeah, million. That's probably true. You know, he was going to be a free agent. So he said, hey, $50 million. We know you can use him. We know you're losing Kyle next year. <clears throat> That's why they drafted and signed one, because they knew they were losing him. And they acquired one. Mm -hmm. So how important is that guy? So 
Or if, how important is that position to the scope of the defense? So if you're in the preseason, do you want Kyle back as like, you know, a consultant on the line to help you along the way? Do you I, want him there at all? I don't even think he'd all? take it. I don't even think he'd take it. Or do you think he just wants to be with his family? Very possible. Very, very big family guy. Yeah, so. I, I think that's what he would he would want to do. Um, the, the amount of time that it takes to coach is infinitely more than it is to be a player. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, like they brought in Peanut Tillman, who never did anything with the Bills, to try and teach players how to force fumbles. Like they bring a in consultant. I, would, right. I, I don't, I wouldn't mind that. I think what you said on the on the post game was, was perfect. Where uh, some of these guys have to step up and be leaders on this team. Right. And if you have Kyle there masking that, it's not going to work. It doesn't rip the Band-Aid off. No, it doesn't. No. No. I just, that's why another school of thought is to let Zoe go. And let's, who's going to emerge as our leaders? Yeah, if you're, if you're confident that your defense will work regardless of who's playing in it, then I, I think I like Lorenzo Alexander. I do, but he's, he's not as fast laterally as he should be to be starting in the middle, right? You're asking him to play in the middle right now because of injury. And I didn't mind him in the middle, but... Until I, I, I saw some crossing routes. He's, yeah, situationally, I think he's a liability. Would I prefer to have him in a Trent Murphy-type role where I just go put your hand down in the dirt and go after the quarterback? That's what I think he needs to be doing yeah. if you're going to have him on the team next year. I like that role for him. Yeah. But how many how many of those guys are you going to have on this team? Right, exactly. They have, they've, got a, they've got a bunch of guys like I don't know. Stop the run. Mix it up. Throw him in at tackle. Well, we saw it two yeah, weeks ago. That. Yeah. They threw him in at defensive tackle. Yep. He offers you versatility. That's, he does. That's basically what he does. He'll do anything. And at 30, yeah. At 37, though, I don't know how effective he would be. He's still versatile, but I don't know how effective he is. Well, I mean, I know this sounds a little silly, but, I mean, he does not have the tread on the tires of a 14-year starter. That's true. He that's played true. Special He's mostly teams a special primarily. teams guy. Either way. Too, too bad they didn't they didn't have Kelvin Benjamin follow him around with the diaphragm. 